Right, now this video, what we're going to be learning about is the work plane up here. So if we have something in here, and we want to build on top of it, let's say we're making a boat. Okay, and uh, here's the body of my boat. It's not going to be a very pretty boat. Let's say I want to give it a rounded front. Oh, this is going to be difficult because we got to rotate this. Maybe we got to flip it up now. Try to get it set in the right place. It's not, it's not matching. It's too low. So we got to raise it up. There's an easier way to do this than trying to manipulate each piece. The work plane takes this blue plane and changes where things are being dragged. So, for example, right now, if I drag this box on, it's, it's going somewhere on the blue plane. You can't drag it and drop it somewhere off of that plane. The work plane changes where that plane is. Now, I've just grabbed the work plane, I've dragged it and put it on the front of this box. Now, this orange plane has appeared. Everything I bring in now will be on that plane. What I can do is line up the front of this ugly boat to it. With one resize, it's perfectly in the right spot. If I want to put the same thing on the other side, I just grab the work plane, pull it over, grab it, pull it across, and how deep did I make this one? 40. So this one's also going to be 40. So here's the base of my boat. If we're building on top of the boat, simply grab the work plane, put it on the top, and anything that you put on top of it will be placed on top of the boat. So if we want to make a little narrow, let's say this is an aircraft carrier, and here's the tower. If we want to place something on top of that, obviously we just place the work plane on top of this thing. We could drag the roof on. The snap grid makes it easy to get it exactly where you want it to be. So there's a little roof on that. Oftentimes we'll have students try to put their names on something. If I grab the work plane, put it on the side, we can drag text right up on here, resize it, and change it to whatever we need it to be. The nice thing about the work plane is that there will not be any gap between the thing you are attaching it to and whatever it is you're dragging in, which is often a problem where students are working on something. Let's say they're working out here, and if they forget to use the work plane, let's say they're trying to put a word on this other side, and they'll pull a text in, and a lot of kids will rotate it, this is an okay way to do it. Let's sit over here. They'll edit the text. And they'll think, okay, I'm done. This looks good. And they'll never realize, they'll never look along the side and say, oh, there's a big gap here. And a lot of times they'll say, okay, uh, that's pretty close. That looks like it's attached. Yeah, it's attached. But if you ever take it to the printer, there is still a gap there. There is a tiny, tiny gap between the, the text and the word boat. So teaching kids how to use that work plane ends up saving a lot of heartache and trouble. Sometimes there will be a student who wants to 
place something on the front of a curve like this. And how do I get the work plane to be exactly in the front? There's a really easy solution. All I have them do is grab a box, put that box wherever it is you want it. that flat surface to be. You can grab the work plane now and know that it's straight on. Then all you have to do is delete the box and use that work plane. Now if there's a work plane over here and they forget about it and somebody starts trying to work on this, the controls look different. What you need to understand and what your students will have to understand is that these controls are with respect to wherever the work plane is. And usually what happens is somebody starts getting confused and saying, why can't I move the text box the way I want to move it? I can't, I'm trying to do something and I can't get it to go there. Well, this work plane is making every, making this kind of like the floor. Here's up, here's down. And it can be handy if you want it, but if you don't want it, how do you get rid of this? Take the work plane and just drop it back on the blue work plane, the original plane. So the work plane is extremely handy, and the reason this is its own lesson is because now you need to take time and wrap your head around using basic shapes and making a work plane. Last thing I'll say is this. If this is a boat, if we put just a simple mast in here, make it taller, the work plane is a really easy way to add something skewed, like a sail. So if this is all a sailboat, I grab the work plane and I can decide, okay, where do I want the sail to be? Let's put it here and drag a drawing in. So if I make a sail, looking shape. The work plane made it very simple to get this in the exact spot I want it in. So now the sailboat was not difficult to arrange because I understood how to use the work plane on this rounded surface. So again, like I said, take the work plane, drop it on the floor whenever you don't want it, and practice stacking things up, putting words on the sides of things,